Hi, my name is Niall, and I'm from Lena, and I'm here today to tell you about the technology that, we, that we've been working on. And my name is Dale, and I'm from Lena. And what we've been working on is a technology that enables Linux binaries to run on different Unix, Windows, and Macintosh operating systems with native looking feel. And the best way to tell you about this is to show it to you. And so what we have on this USB key is a set, a set of Linux binaries that we're going to run on different operating systems and show you Lena in action. So the first thing I'm going to do is put them on my machine. And I'll pop open my home directory while the USB key is loading. And here they are. So these are .lena files. This is a special kind of binary written for Lena. Um, Linux and has some extra functionality in it, and I've taken these exact binaries from the memory stick, putting them on his machine. Um, and Sal's going to do the same thing? On my Mac, if you can see, this is a genuine Macintosh computer, and I'm going to stick the memory stick right in there. And while Niall's getting this started, I'm going to go ahead and grab the same binaries off of this memory stick and put it on the Mac. Okay, and so we'll go to my machine right here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, Lino in action. First thing I'll do is I'll start it. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is install Lina binary. And the first Lina binary I'm going to install is a web application called Datamail. And what's great about this is that normally if you installed applications before, you had to compile them, find the dependencies. So it can take a long time to install a web application. But with, with Lina it's instant. So first I'll run Lina install. And I'll go ahead and install Datamail. Yeah, I actually first set this up on a normal Linux machine, and Donamail has a couple rather unusual dependencies, and it also needs the Apache server to be set up in a configuration file, and it's actually quite a lengthy process. Yeah, and now I'm going to run Donamail, and this will instantly run on my machine. And I'm going to go ahead and open the Firefox web browser right here, and you'll see that Donamail is running on my machine. <laughs> and here you can see Donamail. And Sale is now going to run that exact same binary on her machine. Alright, I got a little bit behind here. Let's go to pre install it. Um, so once again, I'm installing I, the same binaries that I copied over from the, from the memory stick. I am now using the Lean install program to install take three directories up um, the Donamail.lena file. And I'm then going to run that using Lena, just like this. And that gets Dotamail all installed and configured here. And I open my Firefox and see if it works. So this is the Linux web app Dotamail running on an Apache server on a Macintosh machine, which is pretty cool. And there it is. It's a beautiful little application, actually. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run Nano on this machine. And what's great about this is this Nano binary will run on any Linux distribution, and it's natively integrated in the command line. Now the way that we've done this is we've actually gone ahead and, and we created a native wrapper so that you can use the command line utility the way you use any other command line utility on this operating system. So we install that wrapper and use your local Lina, and here's Nano, and I'm going to edit hello.txt. And here you can see we're, in, we're editing hello.txt. I already have hello world there. And let's just say goodbye. And that's now that binary running on this Linux operating system. Okay, and so over here I have just installed, using the Linux install program, the same binary here on the Mac machine. And using the same command line to get it started, I'm going to invoke user local Lina nano and Wait a second, and ta-da, we have a Nano instance running right here on the Mac machine, which actually, if you like to use text editors and you have a favorite one, it's very nice to be able to use a Nano on a Mac. Yes. So, um, that's and the next And for the final demonstration, what we're going to do is show you a GUI application. And, this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this GUI application over here, and it's an image program, so I'm going to install image.lina. And then I'm going to run it on this machine, and you'll see that it has a native look and feel of the GNOME operating system, GTK widgets, and everything. And it'll pop up here. And what's great about this is it enables users to use this application the way they would other applications on Linux. So here is this image program with, as you can see, uh, GNOME look and feel, GNOME web browser, and GNOME buttons, GNOME menus, etc., etc. And sales over here. 
installing image.lena. Oops, I actually, and she actually just ran it. I actually just ran it. Ran it. Ran it. And, and at any rate, I now have the, the image application open here, the exact same binary open here on the Macintosh machine. And as you can see, it's clearly a Macintosh uh, program. It has the Macintosh file selector. For instance, we can open an image right here. You notice the, the menu images or the menu items are right here across the top of the screen as is standard on a Mac. And one side note is that I am absolutely not a Mac person at all. I'm very unfamiliar with the operating system. I'm a Linux programmer. And I actually wrote this program in C++ and it was a really big deal um, debugging it on Mac for me. I could sit right here and program in my native environment and then run it. The first time I saw this thing running on the Mac after I recompiled it, it was just like very nice, yeah. <laughs> I have to say. And these are these it's the same Linux binary on both sides, but with different look and feel. And I'm gonna go ahead and now reboot to Windows and show you this on Windows. But let's just while we're rebooting the Windows Windows, let's just talk for a second about what this means for businesses, open source developers, and ordinary users. For businesses, it means for the first time they can develop a Linux binary and just debug it, test and compile it once and deploy it to any operating system in the organization. So they can eliminate all that time of trying to make it work in other operating systems. It makes open source extremely portable on rebooting to Windows. And uh, in addition, it makes open source secure because all of these binaries can only access those resources of the host that you allow them to access. So open source is also secure. It makes open source usable because it has a look and feel and the native integration of whatever operating system you're using. Uh, that's the enterprise perspective. The open source developer perspective, which is also really wonderful, is you can just create one binary and anyone in the world can use it. So if you're an ISV, an open source developer, or once again an enterprise, that's wonderful because it means finally open source is usable. And finally, from the user perspective, it means everyone can use open source applications. Because right now, the only way you can use most open source applications is if you know how to compile them, find the dependencies, configure them, and that's actually a very small fragment of the population. Very small, 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 small segment of the population. People be sent in the source force, they're not really sure what to do with it. So once we have one clean is running on everybody's machine, they can get a source force, get that binary, you know, it'll pop up on their window, and they double click it, and they're good to go. It's 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 something that's going to transform the industry because everyone can suddenly use open source, which they can't do now. Uh, one note as we go into Windows, you will notice that I'm using Sigwin. That's only because we haven't fully ported all of our APIs over to the Windows APIs. It's not a part of our solution. So I'm only going to show you one of the demos on Windows just for time's sake. And when we see you in person, we can show you all of them. And here's the USB key. I'm going to put it in here. <laughs> I'm a software developer. <laughs> The hardware is not really there. We go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Good job. laughs> yes, that was the limit of my capabilities right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move these files over to here once again and overwrite all the existing ones. And I'm going to go ahead and run the image program. And then I'll go ahead and install it. And what's great about this, too, is that one of the things that happens when you're trying to transition to Linux and you're in the enterprise is sometimes is right now it's an all or nothing proposition. If you want to transition to Linux, you have to completely transition to a Linux machine. What Lina enables is people to slowly use the Linux applications that they, they want to use and to transition off of the proprietary ones that they're moving away from. And so you can use open source Linux applications and Windows applications side by side. Without prying Outlook out of anyone's fingers. That's right. So I'm going to run the image program right now and you'll see that it has Windows look and feel. And so what we've just done is run the same binary in three different operating systems and it takes on the native look and feel whatever operating system it's, it's running on. There it goes. And ta-da. And yeah. ta-da. And you can see it has all the native Windows menus and tool icons and highlighting and everything like that. And that's because it's a Windows application. And this is Lina. This is what Lina enables. It enables the open source to be portable, to run everywhere. It solves the biggest problem in enterprise because you only have to compile and develop one binary. And it solves the biggest problem that ISPs face because you can just distribute that binary. So thank you very much. Yeah, we look forward to meeting you.